Fandom Community Podcast brought to you by the Urahara Shoten's massive Father's Day clearance blowout <laughs> extravaganza sale. Looking for the perfect gift for the dad in your life this Father's Day? Well, oh, uh, oh, 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 you're not? Oh, you, you feel like your dad has been absent at best and the human equivalent of a cold bowl of soup at worst? Oh, okay, um, well, l- listen, Udi, we can unpack that later. So for now, for the rest of us, uh, my, my name is Del, and today I'm joined by Lethin. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and by Nomi. Hello. Um... Yeah, and uh, we're we're here, having skipped a, a pretty considerable chunk of filler to dive into the next canon arc of Bleach, and Nomi and I are probably jumping out, like, ready to jump out of our seats. Assuming you've managed to stay seated, Nomi, because I'm, like, <laughs> a teetering on the edge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Great. Cool. Um... So we're going to kick things off pretty shortly, uh, but first, we just wanted to, like, touch on a couple of things. So, Lethan, if you want to take it away with uh, with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, first of all, I know that a lot of you uh, listeners will know that we were asking for feedback a while back. So we just wanted to say, you know, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to send us your feedback if you manage to. We really appreciate it. We got more responses than I uh, was expecting, actually. So thank you so much because it means so much to us. Um, overall, everybody who submitted feedback, it was like really happy and upbeat. Um, people were really enjoying how things were going. So we're not planning on changing anything in regards to the format or our discussions too much. Uh, we did get some feedback in terms of inside jokes, audio volumes and wanting more insight into things, which 100% we're going to do our best with going forward. And when we say more insight, we mean like Googling things that we're not quite sure the answers to, which we'd already started to do once we saw that feedback a little earlier on. A little earlier on, that was hard to say. Uh, (laughs) But uh, keep in mind that we will still continue to pretend we don't know things if it touches on spoilers for that particular episode. Yeah, or we just like won't go. Like, yeah, yeah. We just we maybe just won't go there for the sake of of uh, making sure that everybody listening has the same that that we can all enjoy it equally, kind of thing as we move forward. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to we're going to try and not do the whole, oh, we'll put a pin in that for later. If we can avoid it, if it pops up, it pops up. But we're going to try and minimize that to make sure that it flows a little better mm-hmm. going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one person, though, I just wanted to to address who gave us some really good lots of feedback, actually, uh, because I know that one person can speak on behalf of a few people that didn't get us feedback sent in and it was around the fandom aspects of the podcast so not enjoying like the peroxide cup commentaries or the fandom shout outs and we just wanted to say that we are a fandom community podcast and our target audience is fan fiction authors readers role players cosplayers artists etc and if that's not you that's cool but that is our niche and that is where the podcast was created from. So if you don't enjoy that, you can feel free to skip those sections. We just wanted to give fair warning, um, purely because we are a fandom podcast, that we will discuss fandom things. There's loads of other podcasts and channels and things out there that tailor more to your average Bleach viewer, but that's the one thing that makes us different and unique, so we're going to continue to do it. Um, we also got some feedback discussing spoilers going forward. Uh, we won't be doing that in a regular episodes as we spoke about, uh, because we know a number of the people who listen to the podcast um, are watching Bleach for the first time. So we, we know that there are listeners who are watching Bleach for the first time and listening along with our podcast. So we want to continue to tailor to that audience the way we originally intended and the way we have been doing. Uh, but don't worry, because the more and more we progress into the series, spoilers will eventually be, you know, the less spoilers will be out of reach for us. So the more we cover, the less spoilers will actually exist, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's, that's, that's all we had to... To say so thank you so much for the feedback everybody yeah yeah it's great and then too like we we do offer those opportunities to submit feedback via forms specific online forms every now and then but um we shout out our socials at the end of every episode so if there's something that you want to share with us please do feel free to reach out we always love hearing from y'all so yeah yeah 
Um, sick. Is that our cue to kick things off? Start of season six, episode read re- ep- 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 episode recaps. Yes, are we there? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. None of us can talk today. This is a great start. <laughs> oh my god! What if I real. told you it was because between last episode and this one, I actually got my tongue pierced? I didn't, but what if that was the case? That'd be wild. Oh my god! I that know. Would be, I keep that would be thinking brilliant. about it. Oh. <laughs> My goodness, right, okay, yeah, so as so like Del, you mentioned that we've we've sort of had this this long series of fillers sort of in between. Uh, so there's a couple of characters who are brand new that Ugh. we don't really are gonna yeah, we're not really gonna be spending a lot of time talking about them. So <laughs> no. uh my <laughs> my episode recap kind of will we'll touch base on that. Uh, I literally so episode... don't mention them. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, go on. <laughs> That's fair. I bet you, I bet you know me's gonna have loads to say about them when we come to the manga and anime differences. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah I think. Uh, well, they're just all of the manga and anime differences. They are. <laughs> I gloss over them a little bit, and the, yeah, they have no, their name, and I just fine. <laughs> We'll just yeah, we'll just say fine. their name and you guys will know that it's filler. <laughs> we'll just go this filler. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, cool. So episode 110 then reopening of the substitute business and the terrifying transfer student. Woo! The episode start. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not gonna do that every time. <laughs> go, 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 every go, time. Go. Every time I mention his name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the episode starts with Grand Fisher emerging from his cocoon and calling Ichigo's name, while the real Ichigo remains woefully ignorant in his first day back at school. Some shenanigans with his friends ensue, and we find out that Tatsuki can see Ichigo's soul pass, when Ukitake said that no ordinary humans would be able to. Ichigo thinks it must be defective until it sounds an alarm quite funnily in the middle of class. I don't think funnily is a word, but I'm making it one. Um, Ich- Ichigo leaves to dispose of the hollow and we see a mysterious man hanging upside down in the air, drinking water upside down too, as you do, quite normal. Uh, we, then- <laughs> we get a cutaway of some filler characters, but we don't really care about them, so we're moving on. Shinji introduces himself to the class and we realise that this is the same figure we saw hanging upside down outside. He sits next to Ichigo, but Ichigo doesn't seem to really care about him, at least not until they are clashing swords outside and Shinji proceeds to show off a fancy ass hollow mask. What? Mm. Uryu gets a surprise himself when he's also attacked by a hollow and his very own father steps in to rescue him. Oh, and there's something about some guy who's another substitute in replace of Rukia, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I I think about him kind of a lot actually like not in depth but like his experience as all of this shit is going down must be wild that's Zenosuke Kurumadani mm-hmm. oh yeah. my god he's who um is that or have you I'm so sorry that's, did you is no, that no no okay, that's great. me done yeah that's me done fabulous great so um, sick. That's going to take us right into episode 111. Shock! The father's true identity. Uh, wherein? Yeah. Oh, that. Thank you for the shock sounds. Perfect. Beautiful. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Okay. Uh, so Ryukin Ishida, undisputed master of disdainful frowns and father of Uryu, uses an effective combo of stellar timing and Quincy techniques to take down the Menos Grande that was pursuing his powerless son. Uryu is confused. He thought that his dad had discarded his Quincy powers long ago, but Ryukin corrects his son, expressing that he simply didn't use his Quincy powers and has hated Quincy's so much for his whole entire life because, quote, they're not profitable. (laughs) Ugh, okay, yeah, good, great. Ryukin states that he had no interest in wielding his Quincy powers and that Uryu had, quote, no talent. Um, And in a small flashback, we see a young Uryu training with his grandfather, Soken, who expresses that becoming a full-fledged Quincy is, in fact, no easy matter. So, despite this garbage attitude, Ryukin tells Uryu that he can restore Uryu's Quincy powers on the condition that Uryu never associate with Soul Reapers ever again. <sighs> Meanwhile, Kone in Ichigo's body continues to flee from the Grand Fisher, and Ichigo and Shinji, still butting heads high above Karakura Town, both sense a new, massive, unfamiliar spiritual presence, one that we quickly learn belongs to none other than 
Ishin Kurosaki, clad in a shihak show and what looks a little like a jacked up haori and wielding a bona fide zampak toe. Ishin and the Grand Fisher trade some words, during which time Ishin identifies the Grand Fisher as something called an Arankar, which he says are a group of hollows seeking to attain Shinigami powers by removing their masks. Grand Fisher transforms somehow, but it really doesn't matter because Ishin says, mm, I don't think so. It's revenge for Masaki hours and swiftly one hit KOs Grand Fisher who falls over dead. There are also a couple of scenes with some some characters that folks won't have seen. Like there well like Okay, should we just kind of cut to the chase and establish who the fuck these filler filler characters are and why they're here and why they yeah. don't actually matter. So cuz like yeah. I don't want to beat that dead horse too many times, you know? Yeah. 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 I know that one of the, I only know that one of them is like a ninja. That's like as far as I, honestly I I care so little for these characters that I I think Noba is that one of them? Yeah. Noba's the ninja yeah. guy. Yeah, or the Noba, ninja guy kind of like a ninja. Which is kind of that moment when like some shit went down and he was just like mm, and just zipped his his face mask closed. That's <laughs> the best moment any of them have ever had <laughs> ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's Noba, Ruin and uh, do, 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 do. Kuro, Kurobo something I didn't even look this up um Ku- mm, hang on Kurodo yeah this Kurodo yeah okay Kurodo and they are they're modified souls they're mod souls like Con who were introduced in the filler filler season la filler season to detect the arc, wasn't it it was yes yeah, to detect the evil of the last season which were these vampire like bounce <laughs> Yeah, Bleach went, Bleach, went Bleach went through a Twilight phase. Bleach went through a Twilight phase. They did, they did. <laughs> and it was cringy yeah. and we were dismissing it. So instead of doing the normal thing and either killing these characters off or making them redundant because we don't need them anymore because bounce don't exist, um, the anime decided to keep them and <sighs> we'll be seeing a lot of them. <sighs> like it, it is clearly fully one of those things where they needed to put more time in each episode because they had to wait for the manga to come out. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's that. I'm sure it's a timing thing. Yeah. Oh boy, though. Yeah. Yeah. So they kind of don't do much. They're like occasionally expositiony, but any any influence that they have on the plot is unimportant. Like it's literally it's not redundant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Cool. Uh, yeah. So speaking of uh, their redundancy, I'll just hike them out the window for the chat. <laughs> <laughs> you Neat, have been removed. <laughs> yeah. <Young figures. laughs> we have defenestrated you. You are gone. Okay. Uh, so that brings us, uh, or, or just really, most of my notes actually is for episode 110. I've got very little for episode 111. <sighs> but Me can too, we just actually. agree that yeah. these are like the the, the bleached daddy episodes? Yeah. 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 (laughs) For sure. And in a few different ways, obviously we've got the actual way of Sheen and 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 Ryukin. Ryukin, Ryukin, (laughs) thank you very much. Why Mm. did that take so long to come to me? And Ryukin, yes. Um, but also uh, like Shinji could be a dad, but he could be a daddy in a different sense. (laughs) I'm just I'm not, I really I'm not debated bringing that. this joke up on the on, on the podcast, but I was like, I'm going to bring it up anyway. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Anyway, uh, yeah. So that's uh, the episodes that we've got to discuss. Uh, what did, what were your thoughts on episode 110? Like he seems too young to be a daddy. I know that's <laughs> that was one that. thing. That was one thing I wanted to talk about is Bleach. Bleach seems to think that everybody is at school age and can get okay, away yeah, with yeah, that's true. If he can pose as a high school student, like I don't know if so, if if he I if someone wants to call him daddy and he's into it, then like I am never gonna kink shame. Uh, uh-uh, I am especially not gonna kink shame him. But like it, that feels yeah. So he seems it, for no matter how old he is, and as we know, aging in Bleach is all over the place. Yeah, he seems like he looks young enough to pose as a high school student, and everyone just accepts this. I mean, that's questionable that these characters do things like that, and we'll uh, I suppose yeah, okay, mm. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure that, that Bleach could just slot a Sheen and Ichigo's school for an episode, and I don't think any of the characters would really question anything. It seems like yeah. that kind of universe. It seems also something so, like Ishin would do. 
It does. I was thinking <laughs> that, <does>. yeah. <laughs> just cause, just cause. Um, but can we discuss their new Bleach intro music? Oh my Thank god, Rolling Stones! So that is it's one of my so favourites. I, I love, love it so much. much. Yes, oh, this is my, my ringtone. Easy. Yes, good choice. Thank you. Oh, so <sighs> good. And, and and I noticed something about it. Sorry, Nomi, on you go. No, I noticed something too. I wonder if we noticed the same oh. thing. Did we? Uh, Go for it. What was yours? I don't, well, first thing I noticed was all the amazing cute little outfits they were all wearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then for the sure. second thing I noticed was when you see Uahara and Uoichi, there's something yes. behind them. Yeah, what did you see? I saw the British flag. Yes, and did you did you make the same connection I did? What is the other media that, that Kubo did that was set in Britain? Yeah, Burn the Witch. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a huge Britain fan, even though that, you know, Burn the Witch had some misguided references <laughs> to, to British culture. But, well, you know, that's on. If you want to listen to that, we've done a Burn the Witch episode, so yeah. go back and listen to that. But, yeah, I picked that up too. I was like, there's a British flag. And it had to be when Urahara and Yoroichi were on the screen, because if anybody at all in the Soul Society world of Bleach has been to Britain, I would feel like it would be one of those two. Yeah. Or um what's his name? Sasuke Bay feels like he could fit in nicely in oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. his lieutenant. Yeah. I but, think he'd have a very nice time. <laughs> Bringing up <laughs> Sasuke Bay reminded me of the um the outro on one of the episodes that yeah. we watched. <laughs> it's like <laughs> your chill is just like, oh look, it's the boring three lieutenants. And they're all like oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> like they know. <laughs> they know. I mean you feel bad for Omedo and um Tetsu Zaymon, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as well. she kind of she has a point though, doesn't she, she does. <laughs> <laughs> um and then we we get that um that intro and then it comes into almost like the original like do you remember when we watched the very very first ever episode of bleach we had that same bleach soundtrack and the same kind of intro scene uh yeah. to, to, to hey. this this mysterious place that we yes. keep saying yes mm -hmm. i have notes on mm -hmm. that too actually because go ahead go ahead I actually went back and I watched the end of episode 109. That's where I was going. I did the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. Parallels. Yes. Yeah. And there's so much parallel because that the end of episode 109 ends with this mysterious Shinji standing on a lamppost with kind of like a monologue coming up in the characters on the screen. Yep. And it's very parallel to Vukia's first introduction. Yep. You... Um, it's, it was like, oh, geez, it was just like haunting. It was. The, yeah, I is. actually have a note of what the poem said. It goes, we tremble in awe of that which cannot be seen. And so fell the sword of fate once again in the name of the mask. Oh my God. Ooh, that intro, that first line is exactly what Rukia sees in hers as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's different, but the first line is the same. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of parallels to the very beginning of Bleach here happening. It's like this is uh, this is uh, telling us we're resetting for this next phase of the story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. kind of metaphorical. Yeah, it's a full, full circle, really, as well. It is. It occurs to me as well. So we've just so the end of 109 is is canon content, and then we have these two episodes. And if we're thinking about going directly from the end of the previous arc into the beginning of this arc. Probably one of the biggest questions is like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do about Aizen and his cronies now? Nobody mentioned anything about that in either of these mm -hmm. two episodes, I realize. Mm -hmm. So like the, the extent to which we are clearly setting something, either something else or something related but equally big or whatever, something up, it, like that. that is so clear because... If we didn't need to take that time setting all of this up, we probably would have just followed up with the eyes and stuff, right? Like you'd think, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm. So, yeah, so the idea that that we're coming into this new arc with parallel words in the beginning, I think it just speaks to the gravity of what we're about to encounter over the course of this arc. Because Rukia showing up was a big deal. So in the same way, it's our little tip-off as an audience that Shinji showing up and making himself it's known a is probably deal. a big deal as well. Yeah. Just yeah. because he yeah. looks like a doofus doesn't mean he shouldn't be taken lightly. Excuse you. Yes. He looks incredible. <laughs> he's, he's, he's adorable. Like, I mean... He's, he's adorable. so adorable. He's very nice. He's just very so... Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say, like... 
like Bleach has done Bleach has introduced loads of characters like this before, right? Where we get this this kind of like character of is is he good? Is he bad? Like we don't know. Like they mm. they, they throw this character at us and we're just kind of like like I, we don't know where we stand. And I'm thinking that's we yeah. draw parallels with like Uryu when we first got introduced to Uryu, who is a great character and a good guy, and then Renji, who ultimately became a great character and a good guy. So mm. Shinji can be like take take it for face value what you've seen so far because. Like, you know, just bear in mind, draw those parallels to characters we've met previously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I will also say that, like, good guy is such a nebulous turn of phrase in the sense that, like, I'm thinking about Uryu and probably, like, Byakuya as well, Mm, uh, in the sense that they are people who have ended up siding with Ichigo but there's still like you can you can be you can do the right thing and still kind of be an asshole. Okay. <laughs> you know? yeah, like, yeah. Uryu, like I wouldn't call Uryu nice. I wouldn't call Byakuya nice, but they are determined and they are loyal and they have demonstrated that they w- will stick to their choices in a way that can be commendable and sometimes causes problems. And so because like Shinji is very new to us, so He's like he clearly has some kind of funky attitude. Like he's gonna do his own thing. He very much marches upside down to the beat of his own drum. Like very much that kind of person. Um, so no matter what his motivations or intentions are, no matter what side, not not that that binary is even helpful, by the way, because good and bad. It, it, There's but, so uh, much gray areas, isn't it, there? It, it, there? And it's all about perception even, as well, isn't it? Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so yeah, so, like, we, there's, there's no way to know based on his day-to-day carriage and his general attitude when he interacts with people. That may or may not have bearing on how, quote, or quote, or quote, unquote, good or bad he is, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. He looks good. That's all I care about. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's stylish as hell. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Um, and I guess it's like, it's worth, because it is a small detail, but like, I've mentioned it a couple of times because I just fucking love it. Um, it's, it is hard to see, but you can, you can, if you're looking for it in the anime, you can see that Shinji does have his tongue pierced, which is why I keep he fucking does. mentioning that. Yeah. He it, like what like what is that choice yeah. i don't even care but like oh god so but there is something to be said like that is a very contemporary accoutrement like he's he's a contemporary dude he's very he's very with the time or even like ahead of the times i don't know i ugh. so i do whatever i role play shinji like in a private setting and i often make him wear like gucci slides and stuff because it just feels like <laughs> Yeah, he he's just that kind of dude, right? Yeah. Like, oh my god. Oh. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay, one thing I wanted to ask you, Dale, because I I actually have never noticed this before, but I noticed it Ooh. this episode, right? And it's just a tiny little, it's nothing major, but because we don't have it in the UK, but there was like a little platform at the front of the classroom that the teacher would stand on. Oh. Do you have oh, like that a- in America? It was like a little wooden platform. Oh, like a little podium? Um, Yeah. Well, I don't want to say I've never seen it. That feels slightly more collegiate than high school to me. But the notion of a teacher having a podium and addressing the class with notes from that podium doesn't feel strange to me. In fact, the fact that I didn't notice it probably means that it's something I've seen before. Um, Do you mean the like podium? It just looks like it's, like, like, it's not. It's not. It's not like a podium, like the the stand, like a little raised dias. Okay. Like well, a, little, a raised yeah. platform isn't something I've had in a high school setting. But I went. I I don't know. I went to like public high school, which like I know that public and private schools mean different things in the U.S. and the U.K. as well. But just like. Um, I, I, wore, I went to like a, like a basic Midwestern high school where like, I, I, li- I went to the high school closest to where I lived. No one wore uniforms, like very straightforward. Oh, kind that's of. lucky. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Man. Well, you see, I don't know. I also have a thing where I think uniforms are good because then people can pay attention to academics rather than to what each other are wearing and no one has to one up each other or whatever. Like I probably would have preferred a uniform actually, but that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, slash, we, I guess maybe it's a good thing we didn't have to because by the time I was 16 I would have wanted to wear trousers and a tie but anyway <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah we we had we had the uniforms but we d- we didn't have this platform like the teachers mm. just were expected to just stand at the bottom of the classroom and if they were short you had to just strain your neck <laughs> yeah, yeah oh I like our teachers yeah, had desks I know what that is. like little desks oh. or like stand in front of the board all our classrooms mm. were pla- uh, were 
carpeted though, so you can't really put a DS on a carpet. Yeah, yeah. we had like a mix. I feel like. Anyway, I just that was one thing I just wanted to ask. Just, just wanted to ask. I did write yep. down about uh, Shinji's tongue piercing as well because <laughs> I really wanted to. Like, mm. I, I watched this for ages and then, like, didn't realize that he had that. And then, and then it wasn't until like my latest watch through, um, that I was like, oh my god, he's actually got his tongue pierced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's clearer in the manga because there are a couple of instances where he like fully sticks his tongue out, and you can you can see it, see it, and so like I know that it's there, so I know to look for it. But yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there's a very particular reason why people get their tongue pierced in the UK that I will not mention, <laughs> but like it, I wonder if that translates across other I cultures. I think. <laughs> Don't give me any my ideas. instinct has always been that it does. I I <laughs> do not feel that that is out of the realm of possibility. And I'm seeing that as an existing tongue pierced person like <laughs> so yeah mm. <clears throat> right uh okay nomi you messaged me i did and you asked me something very particular i did do you want to tell the audience what you asked i did i asked you when shinji first introduces himself to the class he writes his name in backwards bless him on the board <laughs> and then he Mm -hmm. He then basically explains what each character means to him. And I've got two different answers. I've got the subbed version, but I've also got the manga version. So I messaged Lethard yeah. and I was like, what's the dubbed version? How does this correlate and translate into English? So that's why I messaged you. So, oh, I didn't even think about that. That's, that's a great question. So I've got it written here. I don't know how accurate this is because when I'm playing it from my DVDs, I cannot have the subtitles on as well. Like I would then have to swap it into Japanese and get the subtitles. So this is just from me listening to it um, in English. He says something along the lines of there's hey as in flat footed. There's ko from Emi Kono Ono, that old politician. She ko as in Kagoro, Shinji Hirako, um, and that's and then that's that's it. That's effectively roughly roughly what he says. But there was okay. a lot of words in there that I didn't know and didn't recognize. Okay. So it's quite similar to the manga then. Okay. Because manga's got hey as in flat footed, ko from mm -hmm. Imoko Ono, that old politician, shin as in genuine, and ko as in cod mm. ro. Oh my god. <laughs> but then the right. anime gives us yeah. Hira as in lectu lecturous. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ko as in um, Ano Imoko. Shin as in genuine saddest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Ko is and another Ko as in Kaoshi Mentaiko. <laughs> wow. <laughs> saddest? Really? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the whole okay. lecherous and genuine sadness. But that's also me that up. is so that offers so much insight because the shin part it just means it, it genuine or true or just or honest or like upright or whatever. So he added the sadist part himself. <laughs> yeah. He was like, he was like, okay, here, here you go. I, this is high school. Time to bring this up. Like, all right, buddy. Um, <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I had nothing on the lecherous front, except to say that sometimes kanji are pronounced differently when they're put together with different kanji. And so like from I, at the very least, something that we did when I was taking Chinese when I was an undergrad, um, because that's that's also like some characters uh, uh, can be. Sorry, some if you say a word out loud, you don't always know which written character it is. And so if you're if you're teaching somebody your name, you want them to know which character to associate with the sound you're making. So you would often say like um, like <laughs> this is terrible. I was like, if I were introducing myself to all of you and like not the same because uh, English is not a language that has characters in this way. But I'd be like, hi, my name is Del as in Del Taco, which I realize might be a franchise <laughs> you guys don't know because it's very American. Um, but so like I, my name is. Uh, like my na my name is Hirako, and the ko comes from this, so you know which character the ko is. That kind of thing. So that that is a, that is um, my understanding is that that's a common way to introduce yourself to people for the first time, especially in a formal setting like an office or a school, where people might want to know how to mm. write your name as well as say it. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So, so that, oh, so I guess clarification as well. It's like, that's not just random. He wasn't like, I'm going to give you this whole explanation of my name out of nowhere. Like, that's quite 
that's how they do things like that i mean yeah it would make sense like if i took my name i'd say hey my name is naomi as in nay the horse makes and then omi so they know (laughs) that there's no i in my name apart from at the end because that comes Mm -hmm. out a lot (laughs) and then i'd have to say hi my name is tammy as in the noise you say to young children to ask them for something that they won't give (laughs) oh my god (laughs) (laughs) oh that's awesome oh that's awesome (laughs) oh anyway Uh, yeah um that 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 was pretty much most of the the notes i had for this episode there was just like a couple other little minuscule call outs that i wanted to to bring up and that was like toshiro and like rangiku hugging toshiro in the intro just because i think it's still adorable (laughs) um and then of course we've got grand fisher's new look Mm. he's been on the protein (laughs) Mm. yep um, <laughs> Can we also yeah, point out that Ichigo's, Ichigo had his theme playing for just such a small petty hollow? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's like, just in case you forgot how badass Ichigo is, here's how he destroys <laughs> a simple hollow. Uh, yeah. That Even means... Ichigo commented on that, didn't he? Wasn't he like, well, that was kind of underwhelming. He like, killed the hollow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The no effort. Yeah. Uh, and then you. I have. Oh, go ahead. Go no, ahead. I was just saying. And then you've got Ishida who orders coffee because the the name for one of his um, moves that he used, you had the word venti in it. <laughs> so it reminded me that he was ordering a coffee. Well, it just means 20 in Italian yeah. for what that's worth, which is why that's called that. So that's why like, it's, uh, the, it's 20 ounces of coffee if you go to the, the coffee chain that sells things in that size. That's why. <laughs> I learn um. something new every time I come on this podcast. I really do. And, like, not just about bleach, but, like, about life in general. Be it a word that Dale says that I have to frantically bring up oh, on my no. dictionary app. Sorry. Or be it... It's all good. <laughs> 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 or things like coffee and, and 20 in Italian. Yeah. Hey. Um, which, which Quincy shit is supposed to be German, so I don't <laughs> know. Yeah. But he, it's, even it's without good. his powers, yeah. he still has tricks up his sleeves, figuratively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on his bare torso. <laughs> well, okay, How, why does he open his shirt? Why did he do that? Thank why did you. he do that? I'm not mad, but why did he do that? Because, you know, he's been <laughs> hanging around with... Ichigo and Venji for far too long and felt like he needed to join so. in. I guess so. Oh gosh, I hope that is one of my. I'm gonna um, do this, or at least gonna see my emaciated abs. Fucking get it. <laughs> and then his dad turns up. Of all people to to, to show to see him half naked, it's his dad that turns up. Yeah, I know. Oh god. <sighs> I mean, uh, right, the- can we- Go for it, go, go, go. go. No, I was just going to say, can we talk about his dad? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. You know what? Let's talk about that first, because my thing actually feeds in a little bit more. It it, it comes up in episode 110, but it's related to something in episode 111 that I just didn't want to miss. So let's talk about his dad. Let's talk about Ryuken. (laughs) Yeah, what were your thoughts on on this particular scene? (sighs) Okay, well, so I think the the first, and this is actually something that I wanted to talk about in... um, because I think we get to see a little bit more insight in 111 as well. Mm -hmm. But if this is the person who raised Uryu, I just think the way that Uryu carries himself and engages with people for the first time, the way that he is when we first meet him makes way more sense if this is even a little shred of what his home life is like. Yeah, it definitely adds a lot more layer to his character now. I feel like I understand him a bit better. Absolutely. It is weird, though, like... <clears throat> it um, she just coming out with you know he's not got his Quincy powers anymore, but he can he's he can still see. So like if you think of someone who's lost their powers, you'd think they'd just be a normal human. They'd just be yeah. they just they'd not be able to see. They'd not be able to use all those gintos and the type work walk that he was using and all those gadgets he had yet he's still fighting and still holding his own against this hollow despite the fact that he doesn't have his powers so it's it does add on to that question then what his dad is saying as well that is there a possibility that that he can get it back yeah because yeah and i think that's true because i don't think his powers are gone like I think they're 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 diminished, aren't they? So it's yeah. quite. Uh, he's almost at the same level as Tatsuki is, where she can see things, but she can't 
do much. Mm-hmm. Well, he he it's can also, obviously he can hold his own, but Tatsuki can hold his own. It's not unlike <laughs> Rukia giving her powers to Ichigo as well. So Rukia was effectively powerless for mm-hmm, a good period mm-hmm. of time in the last arc, and she could still. I mean, granted, she's like full soul. She she came from Soul Society rather than from the world of the living, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I also wonder whether it's like that thing of, it, it, it's like once you see the arrow in the FedEx logo, it's hard not to see the arrow in the FedEx logo kind of thing. Does that make sense? And so like once you're aware that the hollows are in the world and of the world and impacting things, like you're not going to see a train crash anymore. You're going to see hollow destruction, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. There's an arrow in the FedEx logo. Here to help, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. I'm literally giggling that right now. Yeah, well, now you have to. <laughs> How did I never, like, mind I, you, I think FedEx is a bit more, like, American I mean, probably, than, probably. Than, than here. Mm. But wow, wow, look at that. Okay, yeah, that's me go. now. I'm never going to unsee that. That's it. Exactly, exactly. But it's like, but it's kind of hidden. And then once you're aware of it, you're like, oh, geez, I'm very aware of it. <gasps> oh, my that. gosh. I've just seen it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the Bleach Fandom Community Podcast where you find out about logos. <laughs> Love it. Um, Not only did we get a new opening, we also got a new ending. Which, yes, we did. if you don't know what's coming, that ending, that first glimpse of that ending is so spoilerish. It really is. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. Like, just having both Ryuk in there and I- Ishin, and Ishin's in his Shikatsu, like... If you didn't know what was coming next, you did now. Congratulations. They always spoiled one episode ahead, I suppose. Like, it's not the worst. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also I want to say that um, the, the, the seiyu who voices Unohana does the cover of this closing theme oh. in... Um, oh, jeez. I don't remember what that collection of songs... But they, like, the, the concept covers or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and her voice is really, really pretty. And so uh, for, for those of you who are Unohana enthusiasts, that's well worth checking out. The song is called Sakura Biori. Um, which is like the weather or the time of cherry blossoms. So it's very, it's like happy, sad in a way that I really like. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess the uh, the only other thing that I just wanted to hit in this episode is just a, a little snippet of the conversation that Shinji and Ichigo have when they're clashing up in the air late at night, um, right after Shinji like conjures this hollow mask. Um, and he he says that he is, quote, a soul reaper who has stepped into the domain of hollows. And so, of course, there are parallels between Ichigo's situation with his, like, Zanpakuto and Mask at the same time. Shinji clearly has something along those lines going on as well. Um, and then this this probably, I imagine we have some more anime and manga differences, but, like, I do just want to name that this is going to feed kind of nicely into some stuff that comes up in episode 111 with regard to Grand Fisher. So, like, there are pieces of the puzzle starting to be introduced here. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the grand fisher that you know poker evolved. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> He's now mega grand fisher. <laughs> <laughs> but can I just say that the transition that he went through seemed to be far less painful than the one that Ichigo went through. Yeah, but there might like be. Like he was yeah. just in a cocoon. But, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it was like this big. I just feel like sometimes it really hurts and other times maybe it doesn't. And maybe it's a matter of like how willing the subject is or there could be a lot. There could be so many reasons for that. Yeah, maybe he was more open to change whereas Ichigo was, what the heck is happening to me? And But Grand Fisher was like, I want this to happen. I know that this is going to happen. I also wonder whether taking a mask off versus gaining a mask like feels different and whether one mm. hurts more than the other. Or like what, like what the the reconstruction of a soul engaging in either of those activities is like. Mm. I I don't know. This is pure speculation. <laughs> yeah, more like healing a soul, isn't it? Because like to become a hollow, you're damaging your soul and you're hurting yourself. Whereas to gain the soul reaper aspect of it, and the because you've got like the zampak toe, it's kind of more of a healing of his soul, maybe, and healings. Yeah, you're gaining back some of your humanity, really. Yeah. Aren't you? Which mm. mentally could be quite <laughs> hurtful. <laughs> but yeah, it's very interesting. and It really is, yeah. yeah. I love how there was some similarities though because Grand Fisher was in that kind of like in that hole and Ichigo yeah. was also in a hole. Yeah, it's true. 
I wonder if that's very metaphorical as well. Mm. That you have to be in a hole. <laughs> mm, I don't like, feel like you always have to be in a hole. Not that you have to always be in a hole. I'm just thinking, like, r- like for some, I guess that could be considered rock bottom, maybe. Oh. Type thing mm. is the way that I was looking at it. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Man. I'm like, ugh, yeah, I just... <sighs> I always like it's not I'm, I truly I'm not trying to like play devil's advocate for the sake of playing devil's advocate here but I guess I like knowing that hollows and especially as we'll come to see Iran cars like there there is personality there are elements of I don't want to say humanity necessarily but there there, there are elements of like previous existences and and uh, and, and memories and and pasts like the Iran cars don't come from nowhere you know so I'm almost like I, I, I kind of want to give Iran cars the benefit of the doubt even though all the Iran cars we've met so far are like pieces of shit <laughs> who just want to kill people I don't know I don't know I think it's safe to assume though that this introdu- introduction of this new kind of this new hollow this Iran car it isn't going to be the last time that we see it Exactly. Oh, yeah, definitely sure, not. This sure. is around to stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And with that, should we maybe go on to anime and manga differences, and then we can get on to episode 111, which yeah, I'm desperate yeah, yeah. to talk about. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so I'll start with like the little mini minute details. Um, it's just is she doing his little Quincy Cross bracelet? When he's in the classroom and everybody's ran away, giving their lame excuses to go fight a hollow, and oh Ishii just just kind of <laughs> still sitting there. In the anime, you can actually see his Quincy cross on his wrist. He doesn't have that in the manga, so I don't know if it's just like in Kubo forgot to draw in, or if it is actually specifically not there as a symbolism a symbolism for the fact that he's not got his Quincy powers. But then mm. he wears it again when he's fighting Conehead or whatever that hollow is called. Um, and then another interesting one, directly after that, is the whole conversation between Ichigo, Chad, and Oihime. So in the anime, they just fight, they just fought the Hollow, and it's Oihime that then turns around and goes, "Oh, where's Ishida?" And Ichigo's like, "Oh, he doesn't have his powers anymore." Um, so and like. Ichigo just kind of throws shade and I think this might be a consequence of the filler arc because to go back to the filler arc Ishida miraculously mm. gained back his powers and then lost them yeah. again <laughs> so what was that <laughs> so I don't that uh, that's like the anime's choice. way of saying oh he's lost his powers again whereas again 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 yeah. again again it's metaphysically so messy and I hate it <laughs> in the in the manga it's ichigo who asks where ishida is and yeah which would make more sense because orihime was beside ishida for most of the time in the soul society arc when she knew that mm-hmm. he didn't have his powers right yeah and then it's orihime that goes yeah. oh ishida hasn't been doing too well yes yeah, since before we left the soul society so it uh-huh. ichigo then turns to chad and goes did you know this and chad's like no and Ohime is like, I don't oh. think he wanted you guys to know. I think he likes to keep the things like that to himself. And then, oh, really? He was like abused and gaslit his whole entire life, and now he can't open up to people. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this cute little bit where Ichigo's like, Oh, he may maybe you shouldn't have told us, and Oh, he may panics, and she's like, Oh, you're right, you're right. But then, oh, I love her so. Much. She's so cute. Mm-hmm. And then further in, it links to it because. Ishida is over at the Kurosaki clinic fixing Kohn. Because at the start of the start of these chapters, um, Kohn was all kind of disheveled because of the whole <laughs> kind of like end credit scene omakis where Jinta and Kohn in Ichigo's body were fighting over Kohn's lion form. Um, so Kohn got all kind of disheveled and Ishi- um, Ishida came and fixed him and added a lovely blue Quincy cross to the back of <laughs> Con's head. Um, and so that explains where that came from in the anime, then, because he just suddenly yeah, has yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so then, because Ishida is at Ichigo's, Ichigo's noticing it, and he goes to talk to Ishida about it, but then decides not to. And then he goes, oh, Hime was right. I can't detect his spiritual pressure. He's lost his Quincy powers. Okay. 
So, I mean, good on you, Ichigo, for sensing you know, the fact Something? that he doesn't yeah. have spiritual oh pressure. God. But yeah, so that whole, it's kind of more like showing Ohime that she's more intuitive and she knows the reason why and then teaching Ichigo and Ichigo then notices it about Ishida. What? Are you trying to say that the anime did something different to Orihime's character? I don't believe I know. you. I don't believe you. <laughs> no, the anime really did that. <laughs> <laughs> to make her seem thick and like she doesn't know anything? Never. 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 <laughs> I promise that's all I'll say. <laughs> what else have they got? Um, filler bank detectors. That's fine. Oh my god, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> okay, there's a small scene in the manga between Uahara and Yuichi. Yuichi Uahara's standing outside of Uahara Shoten, and Yuichi comes out. They've both just sent something, and Yuichi goes, "Is that?" and then trails off, and Uahara doesn't answer. So it's either For sake, guys. I know. <laughs> it's just like, what are they sensing? Are they sensing? Shinji? Are they sensing Ryukin? Are they sensing someone who's going to be introduced in the next episode? Are they sensing Grand Fisher? Like, what are they sensing? Oh my god. So yeah. And then the final one I have is that in the anime, uh, you actually see the hollow that um, Ishida is fighting hit Ishida, and Ishida just falls to the ground like he's been hit, and then Ryukin shows up. Oh. Manga Ryukin slightly better and turns up before Ish- Ishida gets hit. <laughs> mm. So um, Ryukin at least cares a little bit not to let his son get hit, whereas in the anime, he lets his son get hit. <laughs> I mean, either way, he's a massive dick. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a dick. Mm-hmm. But that is all I had for manga anime differences. Just those... Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ryukin being a dick is not the worst segue into 100. (laughs) 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 Yeah, let's talk Um, daddy issues. Let's go. (sighs) Now, yeah, I mean, truly, truly. And uh, yeah, uh, God, because I'm just, whatever. I I feel like calling Ryukin daddy would like not be out of the question. Um, That's all I'll say about that. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so like I mentioned before, I think that this is just, this is context that I'm glad that we didn't get it during the first arc, I'm glad that Uryu was a little bit mysterious and we got to peel back those layers bit by bit. Like, there are things, like, in the first arc, we we would never have known from that initial meeting that he had things like the Miyuri fight in him, you know? Um, but it, 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 it's cool to, to, rather, I found myself wondering, like, who is this guy? Why is he so cold and closed off? And then seeing him gradually start to reveal that he is loyal, that he's very competent, that he's got all of these assets. Um and like positive aspects to his character but now I, oh my god like his experience growing up with this dad like the fact that he can do as much as he can do and like is as relatively well adjusted as he is is pretty fucking impressive i've got to say like a dad that says i'm going to reject this skill set you like hi Uryu you are very close to your grandfather you look up to your grandfather and you want to cultivate these Quincy powers but I'm gonna come at you from this like ridiculous capitalist angle and say that I can't profit off of Quincy powers so I don't care and by the way you're never gonna be successful in this way like what a thing to say to a literal child that's brutal yeah it's (sighs) <sighs> yeah. Um, geez, yeah. I, I guess most of it is pretty straightforward, really, when it comes to to Uryu's backstory and and like. But I, but I also think it's it's interesting that like if Ryukin claims to have not taken an interest in these Quincy powers for quite some time, he still takes down this Hollow with relative ease, and he analyzes the fight pretty quickly. Um, and one shot in this Menos Grande. Menos Grande, by the way, like, is down. Um, so that's, I don't know. I think, like, you can probably is not telling us the whole story either, you know? Yeah. Yep. It would have been nice, you know, if, if, if fathers in Bleach had conversations with their sons. Oh my god. That would be, right. I mean, that would probably be too much to ask, but it would be nice. Yeah. yeah. I guess from from Ishin's point of view, like, I don't not... 
I understand Woody Sheen has done a little bit more than I understand. Like, Ryukin, it seems like it's completely personally motivated and kind of petty. Um, or, like, majorly petty, actually. And in Ishin's case, I do wonder if he was actually trying to protect his kid. Like... I, I think, I don't think Ishin's course of action was like the capital B best, but I do believe Ishin earnestly had Ichigo's best interests at heart. I don't know that Ryukin had Uryu's best interests at heart the whole time. Okay, you may need to explain that one to me, purely because I'm thinking about it from Ichigo's point of view, right? My, my right. dad is in this world. He is captain level. We get that pretty much confirmed because Ishin talks about the Zanpakuto and when you reach captain level, you can adjust the size of it. And, and, And Ichigo is going into this world where he knows nothing about anything. We would have expected Urahara to have filled him in on, on everything to help protect him. Where, why, in which situation ever is a lack of information better for somebody than, than filling them in? Yeah, I think Ishin's misstep begins when Rukia comes into the picture. I think everything up until then, like Ichigo's adolescence, um, I my instinct is that Ishin was trying to protect his son. I do think that's probably misguided, and I agree that information is usually more helpful than lack of information. But, like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm not saying he did the right thing, but I am saying that he thinks he's doing the right thing, which is, like, better than just being a full-on asshole. Um, So I think, yes, once Rukia comes to the picture, which, so now we can safely say, like, Ishin probably knew that Rukia was a soul reaper. He definitely knew. The whole damn time. Like, of course, right? Um, Especially, too, because he has that conversation with Kone, and he's like, I knew you were a mod soul. I never called you Ichigo when you were in Ichigo's body. Like, I know what's up. I know what this is. Um, Yeah. yeah, like, I think, I think Ishin was doing the best, like, and too, like, he's a widower, he's raising two daughters, like, he also has a, like, he has a job, he is a practicing medical professional, like, he has shit going on, so, like, again, not the best, and, but, but no parent is perfect, right, and I think maybe the fundamental difference is, it seems very clear to me that, Ishin really cares for and loves his son, and in Ryukin's case, I don't see that love as readily. I mean, it, it could be there, but it's latent or hidden at this point in time, I feel. Granted, we haven't seen as much of Ryukin as we've seen of Ishin, but even so. Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, I just think it's hilarious that Ishin was absolutely fine with Rukia <laughs> living in Ichigo's room for two months. Well, you know what? Because, oh my God. Because he definitely knew. He was like, okay, this is a soul reaper. She's got to be like at least 80 years old, if not older. Uh, so there's no way that this is just my son's random girlfriend. Like he, yes, <laughs> for sure. Um, Yeah. So, so I guess this is just kind of, these are a couple of episodes of just like, big reveals with not a whole lot of follow-up at this point and so we're just kind of like I said we are introduced to a lot of pieces of the puzzle and as we move forward through this arc I'm sure that we're going to see how they all fit together but one thing that I think we can start to piece together um per what I'd mentioned previously about what Shinji says saying that he is quote a soul reaper who has stepped into the domain of hollows um we get to hear the word Arankar for the first time, I think for the first time in this episode. Yeah. Um, Ishin identifies the Grand Fisher having transformed, having gotten bigger. And like also worth noting that previously when we saw the Grand Fisher, you couldn't see um, like human-ish looking skin or human-ish looking eyes or anything like that. Uh, and, and now we can. And so some change has transpired here. And when Ishin is discussing this change, um, he he calls the Iran cars a group of hollows aiming to attain Soul Reaper powers by removing their masks. And so it seems like, yeah, so we're, we're looking at a couple of instances where folks have hollow abilities and Soul Reaper abilities. And these things, it seems like they can kind of come from both directions like you can start at either point like Ichigo self-identified as a soul reaper and then gained a hollow mask um the Grand Fisher obviously was a hollow and now has a zanpakuto and has changed form a little we don't know what side of the equation Shinji falls on we just know he has both 
Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, and we also yeah. know that Shinji doesn't know who Ashin is because yes. he says that. Right. Yes. Correct. Yes. That's right. Um, that annoyed me. But, but he's yeah. also he's also like Shinji looks at Ichigo and is like, "You didn't notice." Yeah. Yeah. Ichigo's ability to sense spiritual pressure just comes and goes out of him like a fart, doesn't it? It Clearly, yes. It's selective (laughs) sensing. Like he only senses things that the anime want him to sense, like Lukia. How strong then? Is Ishin because if we think about Grand Fisher, Grand Fisher when we first met him was this class B A C Z whatever class hollow they gave him back in the day, and so many Shinigami went out and all of them failed. Yet, so then you know Grand Fisher goes away, he comes back, he evolves, he presumably gets stronger, but then mm-hmm. gets one hit KO'd by Ishin. So. so we know that Ishin is at captain level, mm-hmm. at least. At yep. the very, very, very least. So could this whole thing have been solved if a captain had just gone out to Grand Fisher before oh, he yeah. evolved? And we wouldn't have had this problem. Well, <laughs> maybe the captain of the 13th Division was doing other things. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not his fault. Being, I don't th- know. <laughs> but does that not bring to mind like that big question of well, which which division is Ishin the captain of? Oh, because all of them have is a or captain. was a, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly well and we know that there are like f- we know that there are former captains yep. just bopping around <laughs> doing <laughs> doing stuff yeah yep. like, good lord oh, which no. the fact that that's funny yeah both we've got urahara and ishin both jay chillin and karakura town like oh guess we both are super powerful but we're not in soul society <laughs> anymore <laughs> Let's never I wonder talk. How the many other one? people <laughs> fall into this? I was going to say, I wonder how many other people fall into this category. Right? Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ugh. Oh, by the way, I have a little note here for Grand Fisher, right? Because it just made me laugh. <laughs> that, uh, he, he, when he was doing his transformation, he obviously was reading Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> Because in the in English dub, he talks about grinding your bones. Oh, oh yes. my god. You know who else he reminded me of? Is Cyclops <laughs> from Hercules. When he's like, oh, it is oh. a bit that. Um, so the Disney movie Hercules has got the Cyclops, and he's going going through the time going, Hercules, like really slowly. And just the way Grand Fisher was going through time going, Ichigo Kurosaki, <laughs> just had me major flashbacks of Hercules and the so Cyclops. <laughs> Confirmed then that he read Jack and the Beanstalk and he watched <laughs> Hercules whilst he was in this cocoon. Yeah, I mean, what else would he do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. He said, Grand Fisher, you get one book and one movie. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I can't fault him of his choice of the movie. It's a good movie. <laughs> now, Nomi, you also asked me something else about this episode. I um, did. About what... You did? I did. Yeah, okay. I'll let, you, I'll let you say again what it was you asked me. Okay, so during the conversation between... Grand Fisher and Ishin, Ishin reveals that he is Ichigo's dad. And Grand Fisher then calls Ichigo something. And I was Yeah. I was curious as to what the dub called it. We got called in the subbed and also in the manga Shinketsu. Which means true blood. Yeah, true blood was what it was translated to. Same Shin as in Shinji, by the way. That's that Shin. That's that yeah, true, true word yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. But this this whole thing just kind of... I've always had this headcanon that there are two types of souls in the soul society. There's your true born soul, but then there's your reborn souls. And your reborn souls are the ones that come from the world of the living after being consoed. And the true born souls are all going to be a little bit stronger than your reborn souls. And this, it was just kind of nice to have that kind of parallel to my own headcanon with regards to a trueborn soul and seeing that Ichigo was a trueborn soul and the fact that he is, you know, he is pretty strong when it comes to him. Yeah, it's good It's good to finally know why Ichigo is so bloody powerful and why he even has spiritual pressure in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's good to get that. Yeah, that's true. That actually, that does offer us a very concrete answer. Like, Ichigo being super, super randomly strong because Shonen Hero is like, like, I'm happy to accept that because that's a convention that, you know, it's a shonen and he's the main character. Like, sure, fine, whatever. But the fact that his dad is a soul reaper as well, 
Captain, captain Lebo does Captain Lebo, Cap- yeah. yeah. And like, I mean, even even if he weren't Captain Level, even if he were just like, because not every soul is a soul reaper, right? Like, not everybody mm-hmm. from Soul yeah. Society achieves that level of power, even. So, yeah, knowing this, there's some context, and like, I like the fact that Ichigo being super strong makes some degree of sense. It also kind of evolves. It also links into what Byakuo was saying about how only the strong get a bankai. And how he was so surprised that Ichigo yeah. has a bankai. And this is the reason. Because his dad is so weak, mm-hmm. it's in his blood. Oh, cool. And if Ishin is captain level, one can... It, because you we we also know that the only captain we're aware of... Or maybe we're not aware of this at this point. I don't know. But, like, Kenpachi doesn't even have Shikai as far as we're aware. Right? Mm-hmm. So he can't have bankai. Um, but we know... We may know at this point that... Like, it, it, you can basically take it as read that a captain level Soul Reaper has bankai. Mm-hmm. Like basically. So if Ishin wields captain level power, it is not out of the question that Ishin has a Bankai as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm. very true. That's a good point. Like father, like son. Mm-hmm. Um, super small detail, but uh, when Ishin and the Grand Fisher are fighting and the Grand Fisher is kind of explaining his situation a little bit and he's talking about his cute level up uh we do get that like sexy spanish guitar theme in the background (laughs) for the first time which i just love um and like i know so like kubo is is doing a thing where like quincy linguistic elements are kind of german and hollow lingua like hueco mundo it's just so silly when you say it in english but hueco mundo which is the place where hollows are like all chilling and where eisen goes at the end of the last arc it literally just translates to hollow world and that sounds like a theme park i don't want to go to like it sounds like a bad water park or something um but but it's all it's vaguely spanish (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah yes oh god <laughs> oh, <laughs> <that's black. laughs> it's like some version like come to dorset we have sand not really though <laughs> like, i don't know <laughs> oh, god. um but yeah i just really vibe with that spanish guitar i think it's i think it's like i think it's legit sexy i think it's great i, I like it a lot <laughs> um geez yeah I, it, it's yeah i guess that's kind of it. Um, Shinji talks on the phone to someone who is not pleased with the way that phone call went. Uh, and that's... Maybe we'll find out who was on the other end of that phone call later. Yeah. Uh, who is this yeah. mysterious well, he did, well, he Hiyori Sarugaki? Miss Sarugaki, yeah. Sarugaki, by the way, <laughs> is what they're called. So in the English, so. in the English, he does ask for the person's name. So like he says, is Miss... Miss Sarugaki, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. So mm. at least we have our uh, somewhat. Yes, yeah, we have, we have a happened. name. Yeah, the, just the way he did that whole kind of that phone oh call, God, like, I is know. this <laughs> Miss Hiyori Sawagaki? Mm-hmm, I'm like, mm-hmm, random. Mm-hmm. Okay, is that who you speak to everybody <laughs> on the phone? <laughs> who are you working for? Like, it sounds as though he's working for her, and I'm like, it kind of does. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. Anyway. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is also, I guess now, because this is like introduction, this is the first time we're hearing, I do, oh my god, yeah, I, so I just like, I, I really, I don't know, Shinji is completely like, like, like he obviously like, Nomi and I really like him, like clearly, um, but I really? think because this is, yeah, yeah. well. Just, just a bit, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> Um, but this this is an it, like his introduction, and so I don't know how many uh, of our listeners are watching the sub versus watching the dub, and I actually can't really remember too well what he sounds like in the dub. I feel like I feel like in the dub he has this like laid back, chill dude kind of accent, and like yeah. doesn't oh my God. pronounce the G's at the end of I G <laughs> words or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I just want to acknowledge for folks who like and like I don't speak Japanese in any like reasonable capacity, even a little bit. Um, but just like want to name that Shinji has a very distinct regional accent that mm-hmm. may not be apparent to uh, people who don't speak Japanese. Um, so he has he has what's called a Kansai accent, and uh, it's kind of like when Kansai accents are translated into American dubs, often you'll get like Brooklyn or sometimes Southern, like like Southern American kind of. Um, but yeah, like I, it's it's saying that it's low class is not correct. Like that's not it, and that is very reductive. Um, but like he sounds like he comes from somewhere else, and it's distinct and noticeable. Um, and and 
yeah, expressing the connotation is 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 challenging. But like, this is the first character. I th- I think this is the first character that we've heard in Bleach that has this accent. And so like, it it is different. It is unusual, and it's like. It's hard Adds to... Adds a layer to his character. Yeah. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's funny, though, because you were speaking about what he sounds like in the dubbed, and if you've ever watched Wreck-It Ralph and you see Sonic in Wreck-It Ralph, that is Shinji, because it's the same voice actor. And oh. he doesn't use a different voice, it's the same voice, so I can't watch dubbed Shinji without seeing him as Sonic the Hedgehog. See, oh, I watched Bleach way before I watched Wreck-It Ralph, so I'm like, I'm all good. But that actually brings to question somebody else's accent, Dale. What about, what do you know about Gein's accent in the, the sub? The reason, just the reason why I'm asking is because in the dub, he doesn't have an accent. He actually sounds quite posh, whereas when I'm reading the manga, the manga gives him like a lull to his words, like, yeah, yeah almost like, like, I want to say like borderline kind of Hagrid like vibes oh, or like okay, semi okay. almost. So, right, gotcha. So it's so Gein. Th- so Gein has a different accent to Shinji. Gein has Gein speaks in a Kyoto dialect, um, which is I definitely I know not that I know much about Kansai dialect or like Osaka Ben or anything like that either. Like I'm not super well versed in this, and I won't pretend to be. Um, but the Kyoto dialect is. Um, it is, it is the, uh, thinking about an English equivalent, the closest that I can think of is probably, like, school Queen's English, kind of. Like, oh. the, like, like BBC English a bit. But, wow. like, in the sense that it's, it is, it is polite like the way that Gein speaks like the things that he says are dickish all the time but like the way he delivers there there is a level of genteel politeness to the way that he speaks um but there is also an element of it that is kind of indirect like which which is on brand for him like that there are layered he he might say one thing, but you need to read between the lines to actually get the full meaning. So wow. he's not gonna be he's not gonna be outright rude in his like grammatical patterns or in his expression. And if you take what he says at face value, he's being completely acceptable. Um he is he is slightly formal. He is he is a polite speaker. He so yeah, he's like he's like a slightly high class, slightly posh, but like read between the lines to actually get what he's saying is the point. That is wow, that's actually just blown my mind because see when I was reading the manga, like to me Gein has always had like the way that his English voice reads from the manga for a British person for me, I would say I can't speak on behalf of all British people, but to me, the way that he speaks in the manga, the way that that's translated, it sounds like he would be from a lesser place, not a more oh, posh okay. place. Like kind of like his accent. You know what? Be... I just I just found something else out, and this is also one of those things where it's like, listeners, if I'm totally talking out of my ass, like please at me and let me know if if you if y'all have more information than I do. Um. So okay. So Kyoto Ben, which is what or, uh, Gein speaks Kyoto dialect, uh, is is technically so Kyoto is part of the Kansai region and like saying that Shinji speaks in Kansai Ben is like correct but more if you want to get more specific I think and if I'm wrong about this like like I said fully at me Shinji is speaks what is closer to Osaka Ben Mm -hmm. which is like stereotypical that's that sort of like like once again I hate saying lower class because like that is not that is, it's, 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 it's reductive and does not actually capture all of the everything, but like stereotypically, yeah. stereotypically. And it's like a shorthand. It's, it's, it's a, it's not Cockney in a stage play, <laughs> but it is not unlike that. Right. right. Gotcha. Like where you'd hear like some, some trained actor speak in a shit Cockney accent in a Christmas carol, because that's just like what uh. you do. <laughs> <laughs> so this this now makes sense as to why Gein in the dub sounds really posh. And I'm like, I was always so confused by this because I was like, I'm reading the manga and I'm just like, that's not how he speaks in the manga. Like, he sounds like he should be from Glasgow, <laughs> not Queen's British right. English. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not like saying that, like, Gein has a penthouse in Edinburgh and Shinji's no. penthouse. Like, it's not <laughs> no. that, but it's also not not that. Not not that, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, that makes way more sense. That's that's interesting. Yeah, or like, or like for for American, like Shinji Shinji lives in Crown Heights in Brooklyn, and Gein has a penthouse on the Upper East Side. <laughs> if that's a more useful point of reference for <laughs> um, depending, I don't know where all of our listeners. I mean, I know where some of our listeners are from, but I don't. I don't even like. I don't even know how well y'all know New York, even if you are American. <laughs> but you know, for example, <laughs> it's all good. Because I'd kind of known about Shinji's because I'd asked someone in the server um, whose partner is actually Japanese and they went to go check with them and their response was that it is a, they think it's an Osaka accent or at least a fake Osaka accent. So he's like kind of putting it on. <gasps> a fake Osaka accent? Shinji, you motherfucker! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, isn't right. that a fucking power move to like, which I guess the only counterpoint to that that I possibly have is like showing up and being like, hi, I'm a new transfer student and then like putting on an accent for the sake of assuming a character makes sense. It's just that he uses the same accent when he's on the phone to whoever he's on the phone to. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. Well, if we take what if we take what was ha- happening at the end of episode 109, where he's mm. talking about Kawakuatan and he's like, what is this cruddy place? Maybe <laughs> he just spent some time in Osaka and he has literally just moved into. But before that, he was from, well, the Soul Society <laughs> mm. <laughs> or whatever he was from. Is, I mean, because so. again, Soul Reaper, like, we don't know how old he is. We don't know where he's lived his life, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? I can go into the manga anime differences. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Bound detectors. That's it. Dumb. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's the only manga anime difference, and it was that huge long scene with them. Yeah, that. Oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> Um, oh, geez, I guess I actually did have one more thing that I just wanted to, like, say out loud, which is that the protection charm that Ishin gave Ichigo is, like, a real protection charm that actually did keep Ichigo's body while Kone was inhabiting it in yeah. the hollow a little bit. So, like, there's real mad not, well, not magic, but there's real power in that. So I was surprised it was red, nice. though, <laughs> because in the Bleach oh? Wave Souls game, it's purple, <laughs> and I was expecting it to oh. be purple. I was like, oh, it's, oh. it's red. Whoops, never mind. So, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Cool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> wow. Um. I guess a lot of this. I know we we opened. We were like, we're gonna be so insightful per the feedback, and then I think mostly all we did was just like scream about stuff that we liked. But you know what? We'll work on it. <laughs> There's been some discussions as well. We've had some in-depth oh, discussions. Been, yeah. It's been quite a good episode, I think. I oh, think it has, yeah. and, and the listeners okay. have definitely learned something. <laughs> At the very least, they've learned Italian and coffee mentions. Uh, and that's 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 FedEx that's 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 yeah. oh Or that the FedEx logo has an arrow in it. <laughs> hey, hey man, I, I, yep. <laughs> help. Always. <laughs> um, okay. Um, great. So I think, uh, yeah, I get, like, I'm, I'm just really looking forward to getting into the, like the next set of episodes now that, now that, like I said, we have pieces of the puzzle, we can start putting them together and I am looking forward to that so much. Uh, and just seeing how all this, all of this stuff, cause there's so much stuff seeing how all of the stuff unfolds. Oh boy. Um, so with that, uh, do we have anything this week for delving into the Don guy? I don't think we do. I've not seen much on Twitter and I've not heard of much like around my mm. travels on the server or anything. So Yeah, same. I've not seen anything or heard anything. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It's we're still in that slight lull. Well, what I can give I guess I can give some some news from the server. Oh yeah, um, do that. that's perfect. Yeah. Bang in the middle of our collab challenge. So we set everybody a, co- a challenge over the month of June to collab with other people in the server. So in the end of this month, we can look forward to like pod fix coming out. There's some groups that are doing pod fix of each other's oh, works. Fun, fun. Um, there's like people that are doing role plays and turning them into fan fictions. There's people who's doing combined artwork and things for fan fictions. So loads of stuff going to be coming out at the end of this month. So make sure you follow our socials. Love that. Awesome. Yes. Cool. All right. So up next, then, we've got our Shinigami Cup Peroxide Edition. Uh, Who wore it best this week, friends? I'll let Nomi go first. Okay. (laughs) 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 You can let, you won't know where this is going. Anyway, what this is going to be. Shinji. I mean, all of Shinji. Shinji. But most particularly, Shinji drinking water upside down and his smug smile with it. (laughs) 
Because <laughs> okay, I my I literally just wrote who wore it best. My full answer was Shinji. Also, <laughs> that's, that's my whole answer. I don't care. Yes, it's just Shinji. Shinji wore it best. Yes. What did he wear wow. best? Who cares? Shinji. He wore Shinji the episode. Wore He's yeah. wearing the anime right now. Okay. He's wearing the whole entire <laughs> franchise. Yeah. 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 Special shout out to Uryu and his open shirt. <laughs> that was mine. My, I had. I was torn between two. I had Uryu wearing this open shirt. Jesus. And it also had uh, Ishin wearing his Captain's Hayori off his shoulder. Ooh. Oh, that's true. That was a strong style choice. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Good point. So it was just so that we couldn't see which freaking number was on the back of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean... <gasps> that is exactly... Yep. That is totally yeah. why. That's so clever. Yeah. Well, Pain, yes. <laughs> I mean... I also have written Ryukun and Ishin and the identical looks of knowing and the fact they both made the entrance with the exact same wording. Like, they both said Yahweh, Yahweh when they first entered the scene. They, they truly did. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like they had dad oh. meetings and it's like, so let's make our entrance this way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so up next we have Best Ship. I've done something different. <gasps> Shock. Um, mine is actually the class teacher and lame excuses because as excuses go, <laughs> or he made Chad and Ichigo's excuse to leave class was pretty lame, but he she liked it and <laughs> she let them go. So yeah, teacher and lame excuses. <laughs> That's good. I had uh, uh, Bleachy's daddies and plot conveniences. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, mine was Ishin Zampakto and the Grand Fisher. <laughs> the made in the world of the living. <laughs> Get sliced. I mean, it was, it was nice that it was a Sheen that finally got, like, I know that if it, sometimes it might feel like it should have been Ichigo, but I'm, I'm also mm. glad that Sheen, it was somebody in the family that got to finish the Grand Fisher for what he did to their mother. I think wife. it's really poetic, especially because yeah. way early on, one of the first things we see about Ishin is that he still really venerates his late wife, and I get the sense you. I feel I get the sense that they had a nice relationship. We don't know much about her, but like, yeah, I feel like that's that's that was important to him. That was nice. That was yeah. So I yes, I also really like the fact that he finishes Grand Fisher off. I mm-hmm. think it's it's very satisfying narratively. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, and finally, we've got Double Take, Double Take. That's also Ishin and Ryukin and their same entrance. <laughs> it was a case of, wait, Good. did Ishin just arrive the exact same way Ryukin arrived? Yeah. Good. <clears throat> uh, for me, it was a Shinji's tongue piercing. <laughs> hey! <Yay. laughs> yeah. uh, mine uh, was from it was from the the closing scene. Or excuse me, the out the like the post credits outro thing in uh, episode one hundred and eleven, where it's Shinji uh, talking, and I <gasps> like shout out to this fucking voice actor man. Like he's he talks so fast, and I ju- I was uh, like. It's very easy for me to get wrapped up in, like, anything that Shinji does, but I was like, yes, you go, Spitfire, like, holy shit, it was just, like, I don't even remember the content, I was just marveling at the way that he was, like, bopping out those consonants, it was just so, ah, I, I, so maybe that's, like, a bit of the, like, maybe I, that's actually maybe a shout out to, to Shinji's Seiyu more than anything else, um, but, but, I, it was, I, I had to be like, what, at that, it was very cool. Um, great. So now we can move on to our fandom shout outs. So my fandom shout out comes from Reddit. And it is a cosplayer by the name of Naichiro. Um, and they have done some amazing cosplays of Rangiku, Rukia, and Oihime. So you have to click on the link and scroll through to see all three of them. And what I love about it is the fact that it's manga Rangiku with blonde hair and not anime oh, Rangiku. Ooh, okay. So it is, they're really good. So definitely check them out. She looks like a doll. Hmm. Ooh. I also... Right, she looks amazing oh, for shit. right. Yeah. She oh, looks that's amazing. Awesome. Uh, this wig, I assume it's a wig, but it looks, re- that, oh my gosh, either way, the hair is awesome. The hair is like, oof. 
And I suppose a little bit spoilerish, the last one, Wookie, is with the Zanpakuto. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, uh, but we will be seeing that soon, I guess. We will so... be, yeah. But Right, right. Just a warning. I love the fact that she's got Rangi Q's nails done because that is something that I put a lot in my fan fictions. Because even though Aww. we don't necessarily see it in the anime or in the manga, really, in my head, she has always got perfect nails. Yes. Oh, love that. She looks great. Cool. Uh, mine is uh, just because, obviously, this episode, we've had some... Uh, this new fang- fangled character arrive that's, that's just kicked up a sandstorm <laughs> of emotion. Um, mm. Mine's is a sort of Shinji, I guess, calling card, and it is by Blackstorm on DeviantArt. So I will post that Ooh. just now. It's very, very simple art, um, but I there's something about it that I just really like. <gasps> Ooh, hello! I like the colours, I like the pose, I think it's really good. Yeah. Oh, I love his smirk. Yeah, the, like, and, and if you smirk. look, I mean, if you go through this person's other art, they've done loads of stuff for Bleach. There is some spoiler stuff in there, but they have like some beautiful sketches of the Bleach characters. Like the the black and white sketches they've got are just like phenomenal. They're oh, so good. Neat. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, this is very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like There's a couple in there a that I guess could be considered maybe a, a little not safe for work. So just browse at your yeah, own yeah. discretion. Um, I'll put up another one that this person's done just into the group chat, just so you know what I mean when I say sketches. They do phenomenal art. Ooh. Mm, mm. Very cool. Oh, hello. Wow. <laughs> cool. Um, Lethan, you and I took a similar direction with our fandom shoutouts this week. So Ooh. this is um, this is uh, an artist who goes by Japonsko2 <gasps> on Tumblr. Yes! Um, do, oh, yeah, I was like, might know them because they do a lot of shinji stuff yeah 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 yeah. so um the one i'm gonna so i'm gonna drop a couple in the chat but like so this one's just kind of like straightforward gives you a a good indication of what their (laughs) style is is like um they do mm, sort of a lot that that can be i want to say spoilery for the animated stuff they don't really do too much that's spoilery for the manga which is good um but if you if you are familiar with Shinji's trajectory going forward, then per- peruse at your leisure. Um, if you don't want to know spoiler stuff about Shinji, then maybe hold off a little bit on this artist. But I just really like their style. I think they like I love capture that. they capture the attitude. Oh, there are a couple that I'm going to share that are super cute. They have like this like <laughs> they call it Haruko's moving castle, yes. <laughs> where it's Shinji <laughs> as a howl because hair, but like also yeah. because. Oh my god, the word magical so well. petty bitch a little bit. Um and then the last one I'm gonna drop is another um another Hiraka's moving castle moment, but like this this one is actively kind of spoilery, so um I I, I dropped four pieces of art in the chat because they're all just really fucking fun. Um <laughs> but but yeah, like it's just it's just playful, it's just cool. This person clearly has a lot of love for Shinji and I like the way they draw him, so um yeah, check out check out the links that I'm sure we'll post if you uh, want to stay away from spoilers and if you don't mind spoilers then peruse the entire blog TBH mm-hmm. so that's going to be Yaponsko 2 on Tumblr I love this sketchy art style that they've got for some of their pieces yeah. it's really beautiful Yeah, and the yeah. lighting the, the soft shading they've got on the body and stuff as well Like I always marvel at how artists do shading on clothing because fuck that mm-hmm. Like even just thinking about that gives me sweat <laughs> yeah so yeah awesome love it I I'm still, I'm like, I have so much energy. I'm still like hyped up on the fact that we finally got you know, to talk about a lot of this. Like definitely Shinji, but like so much came to light. Like Ishin and Ryuken, those are huge reveals. Yeah. I'm so happy we have those on the table now. Yep. Ooh. It's a lot to unpack for the first episode of a season. Like, I know. right? <sighs> yeah, way to hit the ground running. Mm. Oh, jeez. Yeah, no rest for the wicked. You think you've just you've just saved the soul society? It's not over yet. Yeah. No, not at all. We're still not going to pay you for your services, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a badge, oh, and nobody has a clue what it does. It's a badge that doesn't work because people can see it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Which also, but yeah, Kurta Madani is like, what the, we don't, what is, okay. Like, yeah, he's, he's like, like yeah. what is this? A little bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Mm, um... I guess we'll see how that comes to how, if, when that comes to fruition in future episodes. Uh, because unless I'm mistaken, 
that that is the end of another episode, is it not? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. All right. Very good. Well, in that case, if you like what you heard and you want to get involved, you wonderful souls, you can find us by searching for The Sayrete on Tumblr, Instagram, and Facebook, and T Sayrete on Twitter. Each of these platforms will link you to our fantastically deadly Discord family, where you can chat with us about the show, read fan fiction, take part in creative challenges, including that collab challenge that Lethen mm-hmm. met- mentioned. If you want to get in on that, like, absolutely come join us and hang out. Um, yeah. And you can talk anything and everything. Thing bleach. Now, Ichigo and Rukia might reap souls, but we are hoping to reap some five star reviews. And that is where you come in. Make like our favorite orange haired protector and Ichi go to iTunes to rate us and review us and make us feel like number one. And to those of you listening on YouTube, Don't forget to be like Chad and give us that good, good thumbs up. We really appreciate it. On the next episode of the podcast, we will be covering anime episodes 112, The Commencement of War, Visards and the Iran Cars, and 113, Prelude to the Apocalypse, The Iran Cars Offensive. We will see you souls then. Till next time. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye.